sir. I want some more. What? Please, sir. I want some more. More? Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now this morning we're at Shamley Green Churchyard, just outside of Guildford, to come and see um, the memorial plaque to Sir Harry Seacombe, legend of course. We'll speak about him a little bit in a minute. Now, um, if you do like the video today, please give it a little thumbs up. And um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you're a new person to the channel, hello, welcome. I'm Paul, this is what I do. I walk around churchyard cemeteries and try and find gravestones or memorial plaques. It doesn't always necessarily have to be famous people. Now, a lot of you have said to me, Paul, the channel's called Unusual Things. You're gonna do some more unusual things. Yes, I will. Um, but at the moment, I'm just going along with the cemeteries and the graveyards and the churchyards because um, it's just something that I enjoy doing at the moment. I know it's a lot of you guys out there like to watch them as well so I'll continue with those for the time being but the channel will have some different variations to it so uh, some exciting things that I've got in my mind that I want to do so hopefully you guys will uh, continue to come on that journey with me and enjoy it as well I'm sure you will it'll all be good fun it'll all be good fun but for the time being I'll continue to do the graves churches the memorial plaques headstones all the rest of it and uh, we'll get on with this, shall we? Should we go and find Sir Harry Seagum? Sir Harold Donald Seagum, CBE, 8th of September, 1921, to the 11th of April, 2001. Wow, guys, just look at this view over here, look. I expect to see Julie Andrews running up those hills in a minute singing. <laughs> Uh, now, Seacombe, <laughs> he was a member of the British radio comedy programme, The Goon Show, from 1951 to 1960, playing many characters, mostly um, Neddy Seagoon, what a name that is. An accomplished tenor, he also appeared in musicals and films, notably as Bumble in Oliver, 1968, and in, in his later years was a presenter of television shows incorporating hymns and uh, devotional songs. Now, Seacombe was born in St. Thomas, Swansea, the third of four children. From the age of 11, he attended Din Dinaville School, I think I pronounced that correctly, maybe not, a state grammar school in central Swansea. His family were regular churchgoers belonging to the Congression of St. Thomas Church. A member of the choir from the age of 12, Seacombe would perform a sketch entitled The Welsh Courtship at Church Socials, acting as feed to his sister Carol. After leaving school in 1937, Seacombe became a pay clerk at Baldwin Store. With war looming, he decided in 1938 that he would join the Territorial Army. Very short-sighted, he got a friend to tell him the sight test and learnt it off by heart. He served as a Lance Bombardier in the um, number 132 Field Regiment, the Royal Artillery. He made his first radio broadcast in May 1944 on a variety show aimed at the services. Following the end of fighting in the war, but prior to being demobbed, Seacombe joined a pool of entertainers in Naples and formed a comedy duo with Spike Mulligan. Seacombe joined the cast of the Windmill Theatre in 1946 using a routine he had developed in Italy about how people shaved. An early review said that Seacombe was an original humorist of the infectious type and is very funny. In a series showing how different men shave, and in an impression of a vocalist, Seacombe always claimed that his ability to sing could always be counted on to save him when he bombed. After a regional touring career, his first break came in radio in 1951 when he was chosen as a resident comedian for the Welsh series, Welsh Rarebit, followed by appearances on the variety band box and a regular role in Educating Archie. Seacombe met Michael Benteen at the Windmill Theatre and he was introduced to Peter Sellers by his agent, Jimmy Grafton. Both Milligan and Sellers 
credited him with keeping the act on the bill when club owners had wanted to sack them. Together with Spike Milligan, the four wrote a comedy radio script and Those Crazy People was commissioned and first broadcast on 28th of May 1951, produced by Dennis Main Wilson. This soon became The Goon Show and the show remained on air until 1960. Later in life, Seacombe, whose brother Fred Seacombe, was a priest in the Church of Wales, part of the Anglican Communion, attracted new audiences as a presenter of religious programmes such as BBC Songs of Praise and ITV Stars on Sunday in Highway. He was also a special programming consultant to Harlech Television and hosted a Thames television programme in 1979 entitled Cross on the Donkey's Back. Seacombe suffered from peritonitis in 1980. Within two years, taking advice from the doctors, he had lost five stone in weight. He had a stroke in 1997 from which he made a slow recovery. He was then diagnosed with prostate cancer in September 1998. After suffering a second stroke in 1999, he was forced to abandon his television career but made a documentary about the condition in the hope of giving encouragement to other sufferers. Seacombe had diabetes in the later part of his life. Sadly, he died on the 11th of April 2001 at the age of 79 from prostate cancer in a hospital in Guildford, Surrey. His ashes are interred at the parish church of Shambly Green and the memorial service to celebrate his life was held at Westminster Abbey, 26th of October, 2001. So there you go everyone, that's some uh, information there on Sir Harry Seacombe. I liked him, I thought he was great. I thought um, his voice, you know, second to none when, he, when he's singing, doing, doing his stuff, his religious stuff. <laughs> But I used to like it when Peter Sellers and Smike Milligan used to always take the mickey out of him, you know, just rib him for it. But deep down inside, they knew that he was the talent, really, in terms of the singing. But they had the uh, comedy minds and the comedy prowess, didn't they? But he was still great, whatever he did, he was, he was um, great in it. So I right, the hay fever's kicking in today. Beautiful sunny day here, just outside Guildford. And you know what? I think I found it. Here we are, let's come along here. So Harry Seacombe, CBE, 8th September 1921, 11th of April 2001. To know him was to love him. So there we have it, it's a Harry Seacombe's plaque. And you know, I know there's a lot of you out there that are Goon fans, you still like the Goons. Uh, so thank you, Sir Harry, for your entertainment over the years. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. The songs that you sung for the people, especially people that were religious and go to church and things like that. And they used to like watching him on all the uh, Sunday religious shows that we used to have on television during the 80s and 90s and all the other times. And it's always sad, isn't it, when we come to an era of people that, I know, I know he's been passed away for quite a number of years now, but when we, as a generation, start to see all the people that we liked as kids or all the people we watched start to slowly disappear. Then, um, so I'm not crying, so hay fever. <laughs> Seems to attack my eyes this year. Um, then yeah, it's really sad when we start to notice how more and more of the people that we always watched and liked just go away from our TV screens and radios um, and you know, where, wherever we used to watch or listen to them. So yes, that's Sir Harry Seacombe, another one done. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, can't believe how nice it is here, it's really chilled. This is why I like coming to these places early in the morning because there's no one about. You can just get on and do what you gotta do. And that's it really. Anyway, enough for me waffling. I will see you all. Don't forget, like, subscribe, blah, 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 usual stuff. And I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy.